Taylor, I'm definitely coming for your man. Just, just saying that. I'm putting that out there. Coming for your man. She's not worried. She should be. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the TMZ Swift Tea Podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Miller, and today joining us is Tawanda <laughs> Robinson, Taylor Swift's... Not th- fan? Yeah. Not, I mean, she's she's cool. Listen, we're trying to get other perspectives and not just blow smoke you're, up Taylor's... Yeah, you're, you're pretty biased. Like, I'm not biased. You are. But we want, th- this is me getting outside perspectives. Okay, I, I appreciate, thank you for having me. Thank, thank you for thank, being here. Thank you for having me, Mel. She has a Taylor Swift anti-zone in her desk area. It's Yeah, it's called the no Swift zone, actually. It's not the anti-Taylor Swift, it's just the no Swift zone. But now you know what you're in for, this is going to be rough. <laughs> All right. Uh, breaking news of the day. Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun. Uh, the drama is going to Disney+. Plus. Or Discovery Plus, Disney Plus, They're same all, stuff. Think, yeah, same thing. Same, same thing. So it's set to be explored in an upcoming series, Taylor Swift versus Scooter Braun, Bad Blood. Good title. The two-part documentary will delve deep into their fallout after the music mogul purchased the rights to Taylor's first six albums in 2019 and a $300 million deal. Uh, the docuseries is commissioned by Warner Brothers, Discovery UK, and Ireland, and will be part of the Versus series. Uh, so it's going to explore a couple things. Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, divorce. Who cares? Um, Me. It, I care way more about those things than Scooter and Taylor. But, well, go, we're, but we're, we're going to keep going. Bit. We're going to keep talking Great. Taylor and Scooter. Let's go. <laughs> okay. The two episodes of Taylor versus Scooter Braun will look at both sides. There's only one side, the correct side, of the infamous feud, both for and against Taylor and Scooter, with legal experts, journalists, and those close to the duo presenting each side of the argument. So I am... I'm really looking forward to this. I'm a little bit shocked that it's going to Disney Plus because Taylor did them such a service of putting her heiress tour on Disney Plus, as well as her... Uh, long pond sessions. Well, they can't, they can't be biased. They still and in, in, in this documentary still might paint Taylor Swift in a good light. And for people like you, when they watch it, they're still going to say like Taylor was she was done wrong. She what, was done wrong. So what do you still, think? Do you think she was done wrong? Yes and no. Tell me why no. No, because it's a business. This is a business world. Scooter made a business move. That's plain and simple. It's a business move. But do you feel like she was screwed? At- over in the way that it went down a little bit but at the same time that's why you have to be very careful when you get into these deals with who you're having you know be in charge of them how you're making sure like the the word the verbiage like she should have made it to a point where this wasn't impossible to happen should have made it a, and that's what i'm saying you just got to be we more careful who you have exactly better lawyers a better team she's just taught a, us a lot yeah she taught us she i'm sure she learned a lot yeah 300 million dollars worth Ooh. yeah <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. I, I mean, honestly, I hate to say this, but I'm in a in a in a way, I'm actually so glad this happened because you got the the re-record. We got the re-records that we didn't need. We got the vault tracks. Slut is one of the best songs of all time. Have you listened to this? I couldn't. No, Slut. That's it's called Slut. Yes. She has a song called Slut. Yeah. Does she talk like vulgar. Does she curse? Yes, Tawanda. Oh. This is a this is the best thing about getting anti Swifties on the podcast because you don't actually know Taylor no. Swift or her lyrics or how good she is, <laughs> and like I, like Tawanda, I have a sneaky suspicion that like after this podcast you're gonna go and be like what what is slut and you're gonna be like, oh yeah no a banger I'm definitely gonna go listen to the song slut just because it's named slut I mean that's a very catchy name but I'm. Probably still not gonna oh, like it. It's a banger. We'll see. We'll we'll she get back to you on F that. F word multiple times. Really? Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard Taylor Swift curse. Oh, her. Fuck it if I can't have him. What's a song title? It's, or it's a lyric. It's a lyric, but it's like over and over and over and over Who's again. About which one? <sighs> which because there's always I mean, she's she's always writing about some guy. She is. She does more than write about men. Give me five songs that she's. Who's your favorite she, artist, Tawanda? I don't have a favorite, favorite, favorite. I have multiple, but they're all very diverse. They don't well, give just me one. write about men. Drake. He doesn't write about bitches and hoes? Not only. 
What else does he write about? Being a father, his life, his she, mother, his father, Hillary growing, writes growing about up. All of those things as well. Mm, okay. Well, okay. Anyway, I am <laughs> really looking forward to this documentary because I think for a lot of people, like Siobhan in this office, who doesn't think that Taylor's wrong, this might be a little peek inside to the realities of how brutal and how bad it just was. But it's, but. Uh, Taylor's not the first person that this has happened to. If we're, if we're sitting here saying, okay, she was wrong, you're getting into the business of the, the music industry. We've seen this time and time again when Britney Spears came up, when oh, Christina dear. Aguilera came up. There's so many people that she could have taken the blueprint from that at the end of the day, she didn't, her team didn't, and now she was in this situation. Can we sit here and say she was done wronged? No. Yes. Can we sit here and say, like, does it suck? Yeah. You know, I've been watching uh, Honey Boo Boo. I've been watching Honey Boo Boo, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's she's in a in a big feud with her mom because uh, there is this thing called a Coogan account. And when right. when she was younger, uh, legally yeah. in a Coogan account, you have to put like twenty percent of the child's earnings in, the, in in the account. Legally, that's all you have to do. Morally, that's not correct. Morally, if the child's making all the money, they maybe should, uh, have a hundred percent. At least at least eighty <sighs> percent because twenty percent you got you know maybe you got to pay the bills whatever the case may be. But at least eighty percent. June was only putting 20% in the Coogan account. Now, was Honey Boo Boo done wrong? Yes. Technically, but legally, no, she wasn't because her mom did the legally right thing. So at the end of the day, I'm saying, I'm bringing this story up because, yeah, it sucks. But it sucks for Taylor. It sucks for Honey Boo Boo that she doesn't have the money. But legally, June didn't do anything wrong. Legally, that's how the contract worked for Taylor. So, it's no. It's less about that. And it's more that Scooter Braun knew how much Taylor hated him. And pretended like he was the nicest guy ever. And he even makes a statement about how he didn't realize that all of the artists wouldn't want to work with him. It's like, you're lying. You know you did this secretly to jab her right in the stomach. Or and just, just be honest about that. Or he's a, just a business mogul and made a business decision. I'm looking forward to that. A $300 million business decision. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that he got screwed out of. Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. Oh, boy. Shout out Travis Kelsey. Daddy, you love Travis? I love, I love Travis. Yeah, we yeah. all do. Hey, hey Travis! <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of, at Coachella, where Travis and Taylor danced their little booties off together, uh, Teresa Judice ha is coming out with a story about how she got a photo with Jesus herself, Taylor Swift. <sighs> That is blasphemous, but um, we'll skip over that. Um, <laughs> congratulations, Teresa. So she <laughs> basically uh, lied and said that her husband was like, you got to get a photo, you got to get a photo. One of her castmates, Jennifer Aiden, is a huge fan. And so she was like, do it for Jennifer, do it for Jennifer. <laughs> Walks up to Taylor Swift at Coachella because they're both in the VIP fancy right, right, right. whatever pit um, artist area and said, what did she say? Asked if... If she knew who she was. You know, I don't get, like, Taylor Swift doesn't give me she sits at home and watches, like, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Oh, she she is, like, obsessed with watching television. But uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey? That seemed a little, a little. She lives in New York. Yeah, so she's giving, like, she would watch. New York and New Jersey are completely different vibes. Almost Taylor same. Swift, no. Taylor Swift definitely gives off, like, bougie New York Housewives of New Jersey is a little, they're a little rough around the edges. They flip Taylor, tables, they, they, they fight. Rough, Taylor's rough around the edges. No, she's not. She's a cookie cutter. Uh, well, now that she's dating Travis, I've seen like a little bit more like spunk and spice in her. You're only seeing this because you're just sort of paying attention to her now. No, she's, I've never seen Taylor Swift be so open and like, just like in a club, taking shots, like in public. Like maybe she's been doing that behind closed doors, but she now has. that we, yeah, that's fine. But now that we were seeing her with Travis, the girl is out and about. The girl's living life. The girl is a whole new Taylor making out on the field. Oh, I baby, what? Love <laughs> it. I, I think that she, like, Taylor said that she knew who Teresa Judice was. Okay. And I, a lot of people are saying she was just trying to be nice. <gasps> Why didn't she just keep it real? So sorry. No. Can you, like, who, oh. she's a nice person. Fake. Oh my God. If Fake. somebody was like, if somebody was like, oh, wow, Tawanda, I had no idea you even worked here. Yeah, I've been here for five years. Didn't even know. Well, now you know. Can we be friends? <laughs> <laughs> Wanna go get coffee? <laughs> there you go. Boom. I just feel like this is 
this is gold for Andy Cohen because now he knows that Taylor is a Bravo fan. Okay, just because you know who Teresa Judice is does not mean that you're a Bravo the fan. The only reason you know who Teresa Judice is is because you're a, a Bravo fan. She's or not you, that famous. You see, you see memes like in, of like her acting crazy. Yeah, but like she went to jail. Like everyone goes. To jail. <laughs> right? Taylor Swift hasn't been to jail. You know of cookie cutter. <laughs> not rough around the edges. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I think like Andy Cohen should really take this and like get. What her is on, he gonna do? Get her on Watch What Happens Live. Figure out if she is a. This is. You know what? Actually, his opportunity to dig in deep. Could you imagine Taylor and Travis on Watch What Happens Live together? Ooh, ratings gold. It would be so wow. Good. And to hear Taylor's takes on on Beverly Hills, on New Jersey, well, on the new New York, on Atlanta. I don't think she's. I definitely don't think she's watching. On TV, I guarantee you, Taylor. <laughs> Watches Vanderpump Rules. I'll give you Vanderpump over any of the Housewives. No, oh, she's watching it. I'll give yeah, I'll give you that she watches Vanderpump Rules over any of the Housewives. But she's watching the Housewives. I would love to ask her that if you ever get her out, ask her. Okay, that's probably not my first question, but okay, <laughs> I might get in trouble with that one. You know. Do you watch Bravo? No, Housewives, not just Bravo. Do you okay. watch Housewives? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Boom. Uh, this uh, next news piece is physically upsetting to me. <laughs> Gypsy Rose Blanchard <laughs> is convinced the song Fresh Out the Slammer is about her. She's fresh out the slammer, so she's. You can ha hear a song and relate to it, but it doesn't mean it's about you. Like, she's doubled down. <laughs> and she's, like, basically been like, Taylor knows who I am. Taylor's supposed to fan of me. And that's all there is. Okay, so. Well, the song is about someone getting out of the slammer and running off with their lover. Did Gypsy Rose not get out of the slammer and run off with her fiance ryan anderson and had like the they were just out and about i mean yeah but she also has a song about never walking cornelia street like did she write the song about people that live on cornelia street no she wrote the song about getting fresh out the slammer <laughs> aka joe allen and running off to maddie healy well there's also the paparazzi and the video following the girl out of the slammer which was also pretty much every Single celebrity that goes to jail. <laughs> Gypsy Rhodes is not a celebrity. She's a. She, she's she's not a celebrity. Let me explain. <laughs> Gypsy Rose thinks Taylor's new song, Fresh Out the Slammer, from her tortured poets department, might be about her December release from prison. The reason she suspects that, we're told, Gypsy sees a lot of similarities between the song lyrics and her real life, almost to a T. For those unfamiliar, Fresh Out the Slammer is about a woman getting out of prison and taking off with their lover. Uh, okay, you said that. This isn't the only similarity Gypsy spots between the song and her life, by the way. We're told the TV personality relates to, you're killing it with explaining, camera flashes, welcome bashes, since paparazzi have been following her since her release, and her family threw her a welcome home bash. That's, the, like, the first time that anyone's had a welcome home bash, Gypsy Rose. Despite the viral theory, sources tell us she had not heard from Taylor at all. Surprise. <laughs> Even being a big Swifty, she is. Don't forget, she, shortly after leaving prison, purchased Kansas City Chiefs tickets in hope of running into the Grammy winner. Sadly, she wasn't able to go. It looks kind of a mean girl. Like, she could have at least, like, sent Gypsy, like, a DM or something. Like... Uh, come on she has to keep track of everyone that's a fan of her no but this was like all in the news and like everyone saw that gypsy rose was getting out of prison and she the first thing she literally said i want to meet taylor swift she could have sent her like a care package i'm sure taylor's team saw something a welcome home gift hello <laughs> gypsy was supporting her man where's my welcome home basket yeah where are my free concert tickets taylor what do you think taylor Taylor, said? why would you not give gypsy concert tickets she just has to keep track of every person that she's a fan of that's the whole world basically no exactly the, the, there's celebrities like you said celebrities she's all in the news talking taylor swift taylor swift taylor Swift. she didn't give her a one ticket one ticket do you i, I people call people call taylor swift fans delusional <laughs> And this is just giving us a bad name because there's <laughs> absolutely no way in hell Fresh Out the Slammer is about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. I like you, Gypsy. I think you're fantastic. I wish that Taylor Swift songs were written about me too, but the reality is they're not. And it's just a hard fact we have to live with. Are they relatable? Do they speak to your soul? Do they make you feel... <laughs> 
things you've never felt before? Yes. Sorry. Yes, they do. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're about you. You know what? We all have wishes and dreams. Is this from that tortured poet bed thing, Society album, this song? The Tortured Poets Department, yes. Okay, that's that album. Actually, Gypsy, now that I think about it, it can't be about her because she probably wrote the song when Gypsy was still in the slammer. I know. Oh. So it didn't come out until April 19th. She got out of the slammer in December. She could have. Oh, yeah. No, there's time. It's about Gypsy. I lied. Gypsy, the song's definitely about you. There was time. There was time. There is no way that she's watching TV being like, holy shit. Let me ask you this, Melanie. You don't think as big as Gypsy's release was, as big as her release was, and we saw everything, that Taylor didn't take some kind of just like a little motivation just a little motivation from all the hype and the paparazzis following her and the lover whisking her. Just a little bit. Because what the hell does Taylor and Swift know about being in the slammer or getting released from the slammer? Nothing. Cookie cutter. Nothing. So she had to get her inspiration from someone. Why not one of the, the people that all of America is looking at for getting out of the slammer? I feel like if she a watches... A notorious murderer. If she watches Bravo, she might watch Lifetime. Okay. I'll give it to you a little. Maybe she... Boom. Did. Got a little... She probably did get a little, like, motivation from, oh. the, from the story. It was oh. huge. It was everywhere. It was... It's, All right. You're right. Yeah. Just You're a right. little bit. Mm -hmm. I apologize, Gypsy Rose. It might be about you. I'm just jealous and bitter. <laughs> Update. It's time for our Daddy Daddy Trav update. Mm, hey, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. We love you. <laughs> Taylor, I'm definitely coming for your man. Just, just saying that. I'm putting that out there. Coming for your man. She's not worried. <laughs> she should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, Janet Kramer, a One Tree Hill star from a million years ago, is whoa, piping in whoa. <laughs> on her wine, whatever, wine down podcast. She's whining. <laughs> I love this story. You do? I do. You want to get, let's hear it. Hit it. Basically, Jenna was just, she was just speaking facts. I think Jenna was just saying. Jenna. What, Jenna, Jenna. It, who is a big Taylor Swift fan? I think she was just saying what everybody's thinking. Travis is a party boy. Has been before Taylor, still is with Taylor, and will be after Taylor. So Jana basically said that she gets like ex her ex-husband vibes from Travis Kelsey. She's worried about this, worried about how he yelled at a football coach during a football game. I'm a coach's kid. You don't you're not supposed to you don't you don't do that. I'm, my dad coaches you, football. Oh, oh, you don't oh, do oh, that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tawanda. You've never stood up during a football game and started screaming. Yes, but I'm saying as a football player, you don't go off to the sideline and yank your coach and start screaming at him. That's not what you do. You put he put his hands on him. Sorry, babe. Sorry. Right. I mean, he, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but he does drink a lot. He does she drink a lot and party a lot. It gives her ex-husband vibes. It's not a good relationship. And that now tri ta ta whoo, Taylor <laughs> is drinking a lot more now that she's with Travis, which is absolutely not true. And it shows how little of a fan you actually are. I don't know, Melanie. I've been seeing Taylor slam some alcohol. Like, she I'm saying, like, life. at the football games, chugging beers why on the Jumbotron. You, why are you hating on Taylor? I'm not hating on her. I'm just, drinking I'm not a, hating not on you, her. Oh, Jana, drinking at a football game? She's drinking at a football game and all of a sudden she's an alcoholic? Who cares? She's having a good time. No. Let the girl live. She's been in the slammer for six years. With Joe. <laughs> I don't think Jana was saying uh, what I, I do think she has a uh, again we've never seen Taylor in this light we've never seen Taylor sl slamming beers at football games we've never seen her chugging alcohol in the club we've we never seen, seen her, her I've never seen okay, when, well, have you, when, right have, now, when have you when have you when have you seen her slamming beers chugging a whole a whole pint she like, she's, a, like a, she's Jason Kelsey or something like a, a like a celebration rap party for her you need to calm down video and it went viral for her and wasted. why did it and why did it go viral? Because we don't never we never see that. Viral moments are for things that we don't typically see. So if it went viral for that one thing, okay, great. So we don't see her drinking a lot. There that you just answered your own question. So she doesn't drink a lot. And then she gets with this party animal, Travis. Love to party with you. Um, who uh, does drink a lot, consumes a lot of alcohol. He has fun. He has a lot of fun. Okay. I think that Taylor has finally met someone that enjoys his life the way that she does. And I'm not going to hate on her for having a good time. You know what I think it is? And I've been saying this. I think that Travis has just really gotten Taylor so mesmerized. I think Taylor, As anyone would. I think Taylor Swift is getting the best sex she's ever had in her life. Oh, for sure. I think he is just, yeah. I think yeah. he is putting the, he's laying the pipe down. 
And it's causing Taylor to kind of just act in ways that she wouldn't. You know, you know what dickmatized means? Yeah. I think she's dickmatized. What's what is it? Well, dickmatized is when like you're just getting like such good sex that like your mind, like your mind goes like jumbled and like you can't think straight. You're just anything that they do, anything they 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 want you to do, you're down for it. And I think that's what's happening here. She's having a good time, and I'm. She's, here for I'm, I'm not mad at. Her. Travis did respond, so uh, we broke the story. Our sources tell us Travis thinks that Jana is blowing hot air just to get attention for her pod. Correct. <laughs> um, based on what we're told, people in this world have learned about her is par for the course. John has a Jana has a history of publicly name dropping and dragging celebrities. She did something similar with Brody Jenner. Um, so there's a track record. Our sources tell us Travis and Co. feel like this is just more of the same. And that she only invoked his name to clout chase. And on its face, you could argue it worked. Her remarks uh, got picked up worldwide. But Travis is unbothered and good riddance, Jenna. Of course he's not bothered because, like I just said, he's given Taylor the best sex of his life or her life. So she, he knows she's not going to go anywhere just because Jana Kramer said. Jana, listen, mind your business. Jana, I, I agree with you. All right. Uh, Travis Kelsey is now a TV star. Yeah. So apparently he, I don't know how to say this, grotesquery. Uh, he's going to be having, a uh, uh, he has a role in Ryan Murphy's upcoming show, Grotesquery, with Niecy Nash. Uh, he's been spotted on set a couple of times. Niecy Nash, uh. Posted a video. She's like, guess who I'm working with, guys? And like panned over and it was. Fine ass Travis Kelsey. Daddy Trav. Daddy Trav. So He's Ryan. He's been seen on set in a convertible. Seen on set with R Ryan Murphy hugging. You know, Nisi also, like, when she posts, like, she's been tweeting, posting. She kind of made it seem like he's not going to be just, like, an extra. So, like, yeah. he might actually, like, have some lines. And he, he was on, spotted on set the day before on Wednesday as well. So I want to see him, like, spotted on set a few more times so I can know that he actually had to, like, has a big like a, role. Yeah, like, you can't just take, like, a big role in one day. I think he has, like, a Kim Kardashian-sized role. That's kind of big because Kim was kind of like she was in a, what was it a, a delicate American Horror Story delicate she was definitely yep. definitely kind of a big star a biggish role big enough yeah. role so yeah I can't wait to see it congratulations I'll be watching I love Ryan Murphy production so I love think it. it'll be good okay on to our tour talk theories. Apparently, it is confirmed, this is very exciting to Wanda, uh. that TTPD <laughs> is going to be added to the heiress set list um, because Swift's French tour promoter confirmed that the singer will have a slightly modified show when she returns to the heiress tour. And there was a picture spotted with a white dress, which is, we know from the Fortnite video, could probably TP TTPD, as well as a monkey, which references a circus um, I know none circus of it, life. but I'm. Um, thank you for informing me. This is very. You're gonna have to be talking about it all on TMC Live. We won't be, but she's not in our rundown. Please, <laughs> Please. she is not in our rundown. Um, but this is truly the most exciting thing, and I, uh, I cannot wait to get back on the road and go. Are you to, going again? Uh, of course. How much money have you spent on Taylor Swift tickets? God only knows how much, but it's a lot. Oh God. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this is a big deal. Spotted. Okay. This is our spotted segment. I got Nikki Glaser. Oh. Out uh, at Jimmy Kimmel. All who, right. If you don't know, is a huge Taylor Swift fan. Huge. Jimmy or Nikki? Or Nikki. both? Oh, Nikki. Okay. Nikki. I got Nikki Glaser out. She's I know, but you, you at, Jimmy at Jimmy Kimmel. So I didn't know if Jimmy Kimmel was the fan or Nikki. Okay, Nikki's okay. a fan. Nikki's a <laughs> huge, huge, huge. We love you, Nikki. By the way, I walk back what I said about you the other day. I'm sorry. Um, she clapped it for Kim Kardashian when she was walking out. Um, and this, when she was walking out at the Tom Brady roast, which is rude. However, I <laughs> asked her about Kim Kardashian and Lana Del Rey hopnopping it up, getting all canoodly talky at um the met the met and i said what do you think about lana del rey who has a song with taylor who's friends with taylor talking to the enemy that is kim kardashian melanie these and are grown women she nikki glazer thank you nikki which sh nikki said as a taylor swift fan i have no comment walked away and then doubled down posted it on her instagram I think showing the fact that she wants to send a message to Lana Del Rey, to Kim Kardashian, 
is not cool. If you're a real no. Taylor fan, you would not be friends with Kim Kardashian. I hate this because you can be you can be friends with both. No, you can't. Just don't talk about you. Don't talk about Taylor when you're with Kim. Don't talk about Kim when you're. Ta- also, Lana did a whole Skims campaign in February with Kim, so it's not like she, her, and Kim it's aren't. It's okay for Lana to take Kim's money, so she can promote her brand and, get, and make Kim more money because now people now Lana's fans see Kim, While Lana, Lana's and also Skims getting the bag. Yes. Okay, that's fine, but she's still putting money in Kim's pocket. So, to you can be friends with both pe- both people. That's that they're, they're grown women. You should uh, be you should be able to di- differentiate and not talk shit about the other person. Just leave it out. Just leave it out of the room. There's no point. The thing that- I like both of them. Lana likes both of them. She likes Taylor. She likes Kim. Obviously, Lana ha- or Kim Taylor has no issue with Lana and Kim because if she did, Lana wouldn't have talked to her at the Met Gala, especially because t- Taylor would have saw the Skims ad and would have been like. Yo, girl, why are you doing this this thing with Kim? You know I can't stand her. You know she did me dirty. That was in February. The Met Gala was in May. There's no way Lana would have been buddy buddy, mate, cheeky cheeky, if Taylor would have voiced some concern about her hanging out. Or I think she working might have or working with her now. N- if Nikki Glazer is voicing concern, we should be concerned. Should we? Yes. Oh. Why? Why? Why not? It's Nikki Glazer. You did really good at the at the roast, though. But I'm like, it's it's why. I really appreciate that a public figure like Nikki Glaser <laughs> is standing up for Taylor and not allowing this blasphemy to continue. Okay, Melanie. All right. <laughs> Our final topic of the day. It's gonna be hard to get through with you. Okay. <laughs> fun fact of the day. Our fun fact of the day. This is cr- Twanda. This is crazy. Okay, let, let's hear it. Okay, so Taylor Swift, you ha- you heard of the song "You Belong with Me"? Yes. I, I wear that. shorts. Yeah. Shirt, she she wears, wears t-shirts. Shirt, I did that reverse. Shirt, shirt, Captain and I'm on the bleachers. Okay. Dreaming about All right, we're good. We're good. We can wake up and find the what you're looking, looking for. Has, has been, been here, here the whole time. If you could. Be the one who understands you. Then here are, <laughs> this is just a ruse to get okay. you. I do like that song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all of her songs are, are bangers. Um, but in the music video, there's a bed frame that she said, This is such an iconic music video. Sitting on a bed frame. <laughs> We've seen this bed frame very recently. Is it Travis's? In the <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The same bed frame she used in You Belong With Me music mm-hmm. video mm-hmm. was the opening scene in the tortured poet's department where she's handcuffed. Oh, she's handcuffed to the bed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Spicy Tay. There Ooh. we go. <laughs> All right, Tay Tay. Handcuffed in the psych ward to the bed looking hot, hot, hot. Um, in a dress with a with a garter. Ooh. See, Travis has got her turned out. Mm. You like her now? No, but. Okay. <laughs> I truly, I've just discovered this recently. Uh, this this morning. I don't know what this means. I don't have a theory. But the fact that she has reused the same bed frame. I have a theory. Tell me. My theory is that she probably has like a prop closet or a prop room. And they needed a bed. And they just went to the prop room, said, we haven't used this one in a while. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> grabbed it out and used it. <laughs> no. Like, we have props that we keep on, on deck and on standby that if we ever need in the, in the minute, they're ra- ready to go. We're not smart like Taylor Swift. Everything she does is a conscious uh, decision. There's no way that there's, these songs are so f- far apart. And like, what? what? That's the e- theory. Every single thing she, she does. She needed a prop. She needed a prop. And the prop team just said, you know what? We're, we haven't used this. We spent so much money on this bed. On this metal bed frame? We spent so much money on it. We're going to we're gonna get our, our money's worth. Bring it back <laughs> no. out. Bring out the metal bed frame. She doesn't. She literally. Right, that's a good theory. There's no cost that isn't spared. No cost. She has money. Yeah, she, she does. got money. Yeah. She's a billionaire. But still, there's still a, that could be a prop closet. She, no, she does. She keeps everything archival. See? Boom. There you go. That's, you, you answered it. They went to the archives. No, there's a reason. Like unarchived. Okay, for real Swifties out there, I haven't had enough time to sit and stay with this, but I want to know what your theory is on why, it's not Tawanda's, 
why the bed frame is in the torch in the a Fortnite music video and also you belong with me video. There's something in there, and I, we're going to gonna the archived find it. crop closet. Oh god. <laughs> All right, that is our show for the day. Thank you, Tawanda Robson, for coming on TMZ Lives. What's your job here? Oh, I'm a producer. Thanks for having me, though. Thank you for being here. If you want to watch the show, you can watch us on YouTube. Leave a comment. Uh, If you want to watch us on Apple, no, you can't watch us on Apple. You can listen to us on (laughs) Apple, on Spotify, whatever. Um, If you like Tawanda, you want her back. If you hated her and you never want to see her again, (laughs) let us know. (laughs) Uh, If you hate me, you let Let us know. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you and bye-bye.